It is another bright and early morning, super cold outside, but uh, as I've been trying to figure out new places to go and take photos, something that came across my mind is every time I would go up to the mountains, I remembered these three places that I would always pass by on the way up to the mountains that I always wanted to stop and take photos of, but I never did because I was usually in a rush to go up to the mountains and take photos. So I figured this morning would be the perfect time to actually go to these places. Excuse the audio if it's not the best, we are right next to the highway after all. But today we're going to be shooting on the Sony a7CR and we're going to be switching it up actually. I'm going to be using the 20mm 1.8. So by now you've probably seen the title of this video and I know there are always times that you should be shooting on manual whether you're shooting with some kind of flash or very specific lighting conditions, but I've been straying away from that recently. Now for the first three years of my photography journey, I never shot on manual. I pretty much exclusively shot on aperture priority. And it's not that I didn't know how to or I didn't understand, I just never really saw the point most of the time. But for the past five years, I've almost exclusively shot on manual. But recently that's started to change. But I've been shooting on aperture priority almost exclusively recently. Now, this barn is something I've been wanting to shoot for a long time. I've always passed it when uh, on my way up to the mountains, but I always look at it and tell myself I'm gonna stop and take photos of it one day. I also thought this would be the perfect first place to test out aperture priority and see how it does since this is kind of a specific lighting condition here, but I think it's doing a pretty good job. I think if we just wait a little bit longer for the sun to rise a little bit more, the light will shine directly on this barn and I think it will look really, really good. But I think I got all of the photos I want with the 20 millimeter, at least for now, I'll keep it with me and I think I'm gonna switch back to the 35. Oh man, that sun is looking beautiful. All right, the sun should be peaking on that barn any time now, and uh, let's see how the 35 does. All right, so I'm starting to think maybe the sun will not peak on the barn as much as I want, since you have a direct path for the sunlight here, but then it's cut off by this tree line, which might make it a little difficult to shine there on the barn. Either way, I love the photos I've got here, but I fear if we wait for the sun to rise too much, we won't have that nice red warm glow on it. Now, I'm not too upset because the colors in the sky, the hues still look really, really nice. I think I'm gonna come back down and try and get a little bit more of that foreground element in the photo. All right, I love this composition because I have this uh, grass right here peeking up. Then I have the cornfield in the shot too. Now you've probably heard people say that they love shooting film because it allows you to slow down and be a little bit more intentional with your photos. Because you have a limited number of photos and there's not a whole lot of room for trial and error because you really have to nail down your aperture and your shutter speed depending on your ISO. Now, I've tried to take a similar approach with my digital photography, but unless you're shooting long exposures or using a flash like I mentioned earlier, I've realized what's the point when your camera does a pretty good job? All right, I think that's all the photos we're gonna be taking at this location. I would consider it a mission success.
Alright, this next location is cool because it reminds me a lot of Route 66. You've got the old highway here which aligns pretty much with the new interstate they built in a very similar vein to Route 66. And this location right here, this old shop, is just like something you would see on Route 66. I love the 7-Eleven sign in the background, and then this, it shows like a contrast of modern and old. Now, I know this video may upset some people because there will always be those photographers that think if you want to be a professional, then you have to shoot manual. But I simply just do not think that's the case, especially if you're shooting photos like this. Now, I've found that shooting in aperture priority is more than reliable most of the time. I just set my minimum shutter speed to 1 1 25th, that way I know I don't have to worry about too much motion blur being in the image if there is any motion in the image at all, which most of the time there really isn't. And then my ISO range from 100 minimum and a maximum of 3200. That way I'm not introducing too much noise into the image and I'm not losing too much dynamic range. And that is on auto ISO as well. Now you could argue that I could just shoot on manual and use auto ISO, but I think it's okay to just give the camera almost full control because I do like to control my aperture because it usually gets it right most of the time because the camera will always look for the best balance between your settings. So if you're shooting in low light conditions and the shutter speed goes down to 1 1 25th, that's when it will start raising your ISO. So you don't have to worry about your camera randomly setting the ISO to 6400 and then your shutter speed to 1 4000th of a second. And only in extreme lighting conditions will your camera override those settings and start raising the ISO and then the shutter speed. And this allows me to be more focused on what I'm actually shooting rather than worrying about whether the camera is over or underexposed. Now, I do have the exposure compensation set to underexposed by about 0.3 stops. That way it helps preserve some of the detail in the highlights and I don't really have to worry about losing much detail in the shadows. All right, and we are off to the final location. All right, so we have made it to the final location. I've driven past this old putt-putt place before in the past, and it looks like it's closed down, but uh, everything's still here, and it looks like they might be demolishing it kind of soon. So I wanted to get some photos here while I can. The light is kind of harsh, so we'll see if we get anything, uh, anything interesting. All right, I'm not in love with any of the photos that I've gotten here so far, but I think this might be the best composition that we can get here. This fence with the lights on it and the overgrowth, I think this could make for a pretty decent photo. All right, so that is enough photos for the day. I don't know if I got any photos at this location that I'm necessarily in love with, but I guess I won't really know until I get back and edit them. So I'm setting a goal of shooting less on manual and more on aperture priority, at least for the rest of this year. 
If you are a beginner photographer, the settings I mentioned earlier in this video are exactly what I would recommend that you use as well until you're more comfortable shooting on manual. And then you can make the decision for yourself on whether you wanna continue shooting on aperture priority or manual. Now, once you do learn how to shoot on manual, it becomes like second nature. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that I care more about getting the actual shot rather than worrying so much about the settings because nine times out of 10, the camera will get it right for you. Because in my opinion, unless you're shooting action sports or wildlife or anything with a fast moving object that you wanna make sure you get sharp, I don't think a little motion blur hurts. But that's just my opinion, so let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me or you disagree with me, or if you have any other thoughts on the subject. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to help support me so I can continue making these videos and you help support the channel in the process. I uh, hope I could inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go out and shoot.